Jose Putacio Vizal Mercado e Alonso Vialanda was born on June 19, 1861. He was the seventh child among 11 children. By the time he was born, the Philippines was already under its 296-year occupation of the Spanish government and the Catholic Church. All began in 1521 when Ferdinand Magellan, a Portuguese explorer, on an expedition mission for Spain, discovered the islands. Spain declared it as one of its colonies in 1565. The occupation was corrupt and brutal. The Spanish officials acted lazy, fought amongst themselves, and took advantage of their position for their personal gain and greed. The natives paid high taxes and forced them into labor without pay and under harsh conditions. Farias forced the natives to convert to the Catholic religion. Those who refused were beaten or killed. Women were raped. The friars had control of education, however, it was not given to the majority of the population and costed a lot of money. This caused the natives to become ignorant, making the friars have easy control over them. Only the wealthy was able to have an education. Any complaint or disobedience were treated as crimes and thereby punished. The Spanish friars and officials inflicted fear on the natives, which is why the natives felt powerless. They continued to follow and obey the Spanish government for the next 300 years. While growing up, Jose Rizal witnessed injustices. In February 17, 1872, Father Jose Burgos, a Filipino priest who was against the Spanish government and a close friend of his brother Pasiano, was executed for being associated to a mutiny he didn't have relations to. That same year, Rizal's mother was charged of two years of prison for poisoning her brother's wife when she was innocent. At age 11, these events profoundly affected Rizal. These experiences were one of the reasons of what sparked his hatred of the government. Unlike others, Jose Rizal was able to have an education because his family was wealthy. His first teacher was his mother. To further his studies, his parents hired tutors and sent him to the best schools in the country. He obtained many degrees, one of them was medicine. He went to Spain to study the subject. During his time there, Jose Rizal was recognized as an outstanding student, graduating with high honors. During his time in Spain, Jose Rizal realized that he had a duty as an educated Filipino to help out his country. He realized that it was time to take action and fight for what his country deserved, equality. He took part in the propaganda movement as efforts to advocate for reform. Rather than using violence to fight for his rights, he expressed his opposition through writing as a way to peacefully protest. He became a writer of the newspaper La Solidaridad, writing articles about the truth of what was occurring in the Philippines. However, none of these made such a lasting impact than his first novel, Noli Mi Tangere, with its sequel, El Fulibusterismo. It forever changed the course of history for the Philippines. Noli Mi Tangere was published on March 21st, 1887. The title translates to Touch Me Not. The novel tells the story of Chrysostomo Ibarra, a reformist who had just came back from studying abroad for seven years. He decides to start a school as efforts to help out his country. However, the friars Padre Damaso and Padre Salvi saw this as a threat to their control over the town. They attempted to kill him, but a friend of Ibarra saved him. Ibarra was arrested, tortured, and jailed. The novel also talks about a mother named Sissa, whose sons were falsely accused of stealing. When her sons disappeared, she became insane. The purpose of writing the novel was to encourage others who only fear to start. His novel was widely distributed and read both by the rich and poor Filipinos. They were able to relate what the characters were going through, especially the exploitation, oppression, and abuses committed by the friars and officials. It sparked the hope of a bright future and made the Filipinos realize that it was time to stand up and fight against the Spanish regime. 
After the publication of his novels, there were pockets of revolt occurring throughout the Philippines. Rizal was aware of the dangers of publishing his books, but he was willing to make sacrifices for his cause. He became the number one enemy of the government. His family was threatened. His brother Pasiano was jailed and tortured. The Spanish government banned, confiscated, and burned his books. Those found of having possession and reading it were executed. As efforts to deter the Filipinos from reading Noli Mitangere, the Catholic Church called the book a work of the devil. But despite this, Vizal continued fighting for his countrymen at any cost. He returned to the Philippines in 1892 and formed La Liga Filipina. It was an organization to unite Filipinos to reform peacefully against the Spanish government for equality. The Spanish authorities arrested him four days after it was formed. He was exiled to a small island called the Piton on July 16 on that same year. The purpose was to silence him and make him be forgotten. After Jose Vizal's arrest, La Liga Filipina split up into two groups. One of these groups was known as the Catapunan. It was started by Andres Bonifacio, the former treasurer of La Liga. It consisted of Filipinos from the poor and working class who wanted to fight for independence by the use of arms. This was against Jose Vizal's advocate for a peaceful reform. On August 26, 1896, the Katipunan revolted. The officials blamed Vizal for this uprising since he was the inspiration of the organization. They put him into trial with charges of treason, sedition, and formation of an illegal association. He paid the ultimate price for his actions, death. He spent his last days in a death cell in Fort Santiago. He wrote his last poem, Mi Ultimo Adios, or My Last Farewell, addressed to his country. Farewell, my adored land, with gladness I give you my life. And were it more brilliant, more fresh, and at its best, I would still give it to you for your welfare at most. This was the ultimate tribute of his nationalism and love for his country. On December 30, 1896, Rizal requested to face the firing squad when being shot. He felt that turning his back from his countrymen would make him a traitor. Sadly, the general refused his request. But when he was shot, he turned his body, facing the firing squad and spectators of the execution. He fell to the ground, the sun beaming on his face. He died just the way he desired, loyal to his country and defiant of the Spanish authorities. At age 35, he paid the ultimate price for his actions. Once the news of the execution spread, the Filipinos were enraged, so they began countrywide uprisings for independence, led by Bonifacio with the help of America. In less than two years, the Spanish rule in the Philippines ended in June 12, 1898. At last, the Filipinos were finally free from the Spaniards. Rizal, with his powerful pen, gave birth to a nation as he was a true leader ready to make sacrifices to lead his countrymen to a path that no one dared to take, the fight against the Spanish government. As a way to preserve his efforts, the Philippine government declared him as the national hero, commending his life on December 30th. They also established a law proclaiming his novels as part of the student curriculum. The impact of his novels also inspired other people to take his approach of a peaceful protest through literature in Philippine history. His legacy will be remembered for many generations to come. As he once said, I do not write for this generation. I am writing for other ages. They will understand me and say, not all were asleep in the nighttime of our grandparents. Oh,